So, uh, welcome my friends to the show that's just about to end. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to lower the bar quite a little bit compared to what we've had pretty much this evening, so I apologise in advance. Now, my, it's a shame, but I know I'm going to die this year, and if I do, it's going to be in the back of a taxi. I get, I'm very lucky, I get to travel the world, but boy, does that have a real downside to it. There's not much you can do about it. You land in a foreign country, you're tired, you're uncomfortable, you don't speak the language, but you've got to get from A to B. You have to find your way from the airport to the hotel. You have to find your way from the hotel to work and from the strip club, massage parlor, or whatever. <laughs> You've got public transport. There's lots of options available to you, but there's a lot of downsides to it. They're inconvenient, etc. So you, it's much easier just to pick a cab. But there's a bit of a downside to that. You put yourself in a bubble. You create this bubble where you don't engage or interact with society. In fact, you don't see the things that people see. You don't feel the things that people feel. You certainly then don't think how people think. But of course, there's an upside. We're all pretty lazy. People suck. You don't want to travel on public transport. So you get a car. You get a driver. What could possibly go wrong? Lots quite frankly, and this has all happened in the last 12 months. I've got three sorry ass stories about countries, incidents, and three lives used up. But they've got one thing in common. Seat belts in the rear of a taxi cab seem to be a luxury item, not necessarily a necessity. So let's go to Rio. This is the home of the best footballer in the world, the best cocktail, but also the opportunity to wake up face down in a ditch with your handcuffs and naked. But it doesn't make any difference. You're still looking for a little bit of fun. Let me tell you, if you go to Rio Scenarium, the best nightclub in the world, four floors of live samba music, but in the worst neighbourhood in the world. It's 4am, you need to get home. Don't get mugged, don't get mugged, I don't want to get mugged, I need a safe driver, I need to get a cab that's going to get me home. I saw this man, he was 90 years old. How the hell he made 90, I have no idea. I'm looking for a non-existent seatbelt. He went from 0 to 100 in one second flat and never slowed down. It was the most dangerous, no it wasn't the most dangerous cab driver I had. Delhi, I was in Delhi a few months back. Great food, it's everything you ever thought Delhi would be. But it's the single most chaotic place in the world. Your, your, your traffic is everywhere, there's people everywhere. There is just an enormous amount of everything everywhere. It was the height of summer, it was 45 degrees. I'm in a rush, so what I really need is a cab that's got no air conditioning and vinyl seats. What can I do? Well, let me introduce you to the best cab in the world, the Hindustan Ambassador. Created in 1958, not changed since. It's built like a tank and the cab drivers drive it like a tank. Once it gets started, it never stops, ever. And it doesn't matter whatever gets in the way. It doesn't matter if it's a bus, it doesn't matter if a cab, a cyclist, a tourist, children, or a monkey. They are not obstacles, they are merely bumps in the road. And we hit a lot of bumps. And that's a bit of scary. Now let me take you across the pond. To, go to the Big Apple, the US, the home of automotive safety. It's a great place to, to walk about, but there are two types of cabs in New York City. There's one, which is the standard sedan. It looks like a, how you expect it. But you don't need that, not for the cab ride I had. What you really need is a four by four. And I'll explain to you why this happened. So it's 5 a.m. in the morning. I need to travel from Brooklyn to Newark Airport. I order the cab, it arrives. Here, the green line shows the optimum journey. The red line shows the journey that I took. When the cab driver fell asleep at the road, <laughs> did, did I say I didn't have a seatbelt in the back? I didn't. It was unexpected and really rather exciting for both of us. It was very much like planes, trains and automobiles. And there was a shared silence for the entire rest of the journey, apart from my parting comment, which was, yeah, don't sleep and really don't expect a tip. It's not going to happen, mate. So, through the, through the last 12 months, I've had it three ineffective strategies. None of them have really worked, <laughs> but they did make me feel an awful lot better. What I should have done, of course, is heeded the, the words of the great sage of the 70s. <laughs> not, not, not the messenger, it's the message, okay? <laughs> 
every trip, if you possibly can. It's a mantra to live by. But what do I say to my consultants? What advice do I give to my consultants? Use public transport. It's more interesting and you'll live longer. And, and why do you think the calendar in the background? I said this was the last 12 months. I've still got 33 days of this year to go. Who knows what's going to happen? I hope I get home tonight.